All right, well, here's a few news articles that I thought were interesting. Uh, this morning, there were two cases of Omicron BA2 in California. Now there are 11. So that's uh, pretty much what you expect. It uh, is supposedly spreads faster than the previous Omicron and replaced it in a couple of European countries. So that'll probably be the next thing. And my Twitch froze up and I'm refreshing it. Ah, oh, it looks like it's better now. Okay. So uh, Spotify paid for Joe Rogan. He's the number one podcaster in the world. He's worth a ton of money. It's exclusive on Spotify. And Neil Young doesn't like him because Joe Rogan has really uh, gone crazy like uh, Tucker Carlson on the anti-vax stuff and interviews extreme lunatics that just lie about the vaccine and agrees with them. And uh, see, it surprises me. If, if someone would have asked me, I would have thought that saying absolute lies about medicine that get people killed would be illegal in America, but apparently not. Anyway, Neil Young said uh, he doesn't want to be on a platform that would have them on there. And they said, well, we're not taking him off. So Neil Young left. So he, And that's going to cost him a lot of money. But uh, it's far from the first time he's done this. Neil Young has championed political causes all the way back to his song about the Southern man. He's uh, always been kind of an idealist, willing to take political stances even when they cost him some supporters. And you, Dan Bongino, another right-wing character, uh, got banned permanently from YouTube. They banned him, I think, for COVID misinformation again, some kind of misinformation. It's usually COVID. And then he tried to evade the ban by just using a second account to post the same video, so they banned him permanently. Um, which, So he's, he's off to the Donald Trump channel and uh, um, Rumble, I think. There's a series of these. There's Rumble, there's Parler, there's a bunch of right-wing channels where um, they will not ban you for saying anything that's popular on the right, whether it's wrong or not. Although I think it's pretty easy to get banned there by saying other things they don't like. But anyway... Um, so the Fed has indicated that they are going to raise the interest rate, which certainly I would like to see. I'm appalled by the uh, macroeconomics of America's recent decision to just print an incredible amount of money and water down the dollar. This is, uh, violates the fundamental principles of economics. Anyway, so he, they, people, he now said he's not going to limit himself to three rises. He suggested people are preparing for five interest rate jumps in the coming year. So that will lower the stock market and... Uh, It'll be a tight money policy, and it's probably very good for us all in the long run. But in the short run, it won't pump up the uh, stock market the way it's been. But it should lower inflation, which is his current concern. Uh, DeSantis, Ron DeSantis in Florida, the governor of Florida, has this guy he's hired. And you may remember a guy named Scott Atlas. Trump tried to get his doctors to say that... Um, oxychloroquine was the cure for COVID and all of the current staff, the medical staff would not say that because it's not true. So he kicked the, he found this special doctor who would lie and say that. And that's who this guy is. This guy refuses to wear a mask, even in the presence of cancer patients. He says it's really great to trigger the liberals. He says that uh, the vaccine is worthless. Masks are worthless. Um, and he says that uh, Florida needs to keep using the old, um, we, um, antibodies that don't work and it, they're just lying when they say they don't work so he's he's a fantastic character he's finally going to go before some congressional body to ask him questions and determine whether he really should hold the position he holds as some kind of official medical expert in the state of Florida and so uh, we'll see what comes of that <laughs> but a lot of people are very very mad at him of course because he's there's a variety of quack doctors. Speaking of that, there's Dr. Oz running in Pennsylvania. Um, it's quite a popular thing on the right to run fake doctors these days. Um, so there's a huge Linux security vulnerability. Um, this is a local privilege escalation vulnerability. And these things really do happen about every six months. But this one has been sitting there for 12 years unnoticed. There's a command used a lot in this course, pseudo, to elevate yourself to root. And there's some other way to elevate yourself to root having to do with policy kit. And that isn't working properly. And there's a way to trick it into elevating you to root when you shouldn't have that privilege. Um, so 
They hate trivial to exploit, but the exploit is not out there yet. People have concealed the exploit, so it's not like I can demonstrate it. But anyway, it's been that way for 12 years, and now it turns out that somebody figured it out and published it in 2013, mailed it to the Linux commenting emailing list, but he couldn't get the right amount of attention from anybody, and they threw away his post. He even wrote a patch in 2013, but nobody found it. So uh, I say one way to look at this is that the poor usability of the Linux uh, mailing list is responsible for them not finding and fixing this years ago. Which is another thing about open source, right? You don't have a real organized system of people contributing things. I thought this was a very interesting point. Um, as you know, Trump's big campaign thing was to get rid of immigrants and get rid of foreigners and people and Muslims. He had the Muslim ban, the wall against uh, Mexico, and really restrictive immigration policies to basically not let anybody in at all. And that has, along with um, his extreme racist rhetoric, um, the number of immigrants coming into America has gone way down. We used to be a place where a lot of foreign students came here expecting to get a top-notch education. And um, when you follow them now, they now go to Europe and other places. They do not regard America as a desirable place to go for an education anymore. And I can't blame them. We don't seem to have any respect for truth or science here. And you cannot in the least be guaranteed that you'd be able to finish your degree in four years. Um, it looks like Trump will come back in three years and he'll probably kick them all out. So anyway, they say this is a huge brain drain. Um, we used, uh, we have much, much less student immigrants than we used to have. And as I can tell you from education, I think anybody who looks at it can tell you the, the immigrant students are often the smartest, the hardest working, very valuable. Losing them is not good for our economy. But that's where we are. And it looks like we're, nothing is really going to change about that in a hurry. And Amazon, partnered with a high school, um, and they're teaching a course in Amazon Logistics and Business Management Pathway. And the uh, person who tweeted this said, look how, and person who wrote this article said, look how terrible they are. They're just letting a corporation control their curriculum. And this class talks about Amazon as a good place to work and encourages you to know what you'd have to do to work at Amazon. But this is what we do. I said, you know, I would not be too proud to do this at all. We have courses in Microsoft certification, Cisco certification. Um, as far as I'm concerned, our vocational classes are to help you get jobs at company, at companies, and uh, I wouldn't uh, feel any scruples against cooperating with a company to teach a program as long as there's good jobs at the end of it and they're legal. That's fine. Anyway, um, other, they seem to think that uh, they're supposed to teach them some higher spiritual values, but I don't have any such illusion. We're here to <laughs> this is vocational education. The purpose of this is to end up getting a job. Anyway, uh, so Android has a, there are a bunch of apps in Google Play, a malicious QR reader, and it plants various banking trojans on your phone, so then it intercepts your banking traffic and your SMS uh, authentication code so people can get in your bank account. These have been around for a while. This is the latest version of them called Flubot. Facebook tried to make their own cryptocurrency called Libra. Uh, which would have made Facebook the world's bank in addition to being the world's social network. And all the regulators and everybody freaked out and Congress freaked out and said, do, do not trust Zuckerberg. He's lied to us many times about his other activities. In no way in the world should he be controlling all the money. And they, they turned it, the name to Diem and they tried to sneak it by one way and another until they found out that this is a pretty commonly held belief all over the world. Nobody trusts Mark Zuckerberg. Nobody's going to let him do it. And now they're just giving up on it. So I think that's a victory. I think it would indeed have been terrible for a cryptocurrency controlled by Mark Zuckerberg to become popular. So, that's all the news. Oops.